In the happy hours of play and the pleasures of the day, we will listen, stop, and look before we run. Safety always is our creed for a happy life to lead and a joyful time of better fun. March, march, march to law and order. Check the reckless on their way. For a guarding young and old, saving life and limb untold, we shall make a better record day by day. Meeting will come to order, boys and girls, and all together on the pledge. I pledge myself to safety first, on the street, or wherever I may be at all times. Good evening once again, boys and girls, wherever you are, whether members or not. Welcome to another club meeting. Now we're just waiting round for the old man of the mountain, who's expected to arrive uh, in just a minute or two. He has a story to tell you tonight, and I think you're going to enjoy it. He seems to be talking something about fishing these days. So now, in just a minute, I think we'll hear the howling of the wind, and, uh... <laughs> just getting his old hat off there, coming in. <laughs> Away she goes now. Now, let's listen now for the howling of the wind. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, Uncle Mel. <laughs> I was afraid I wasn't going to be here quite in time when that wind came in. <laughs> me so I wouldn't want to miss one this evening with you fellas. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, you know, boys, I, and girls too, I, I figure a fella uh, looking around this old world today should, should have sense enough to judge what's a plumb right thing for them to do and what's the kind of thing a fella oughtn't to do. I don't mean any preacher-teacher stuff, you know, but just as man to man. Like any feller now that's got two good eyes and a good head onto his shoulders, here's something they don't do. They don't never light a fire in the wind if it isn't all protected, so's the sparks can't fly around and get into leaves and grass and start a forest fire. Do all you fellers know when it isn't safe to light a fire out in the open? Well, I'll tell you. Like I just said, there isn't a pioneer feller in the world and never was what would go to work and light a fire in the open when there's a stout wind a blowing. Leastways, he isn't going to light it up without, without he'll build up a shield like maybe out of rocks so's the sparks don't fly nowhere. Another time, a, a fellow will think it over plenty before he'll go to work and light up a fire is when the woods or the fields is awful fearful dry, like when we haven't had no rain for a long spell. Matter of fact, a pioneer-hearted fellow will always use his head first and he'll never do any hurt to nature and woods and fields and animals and birds. No, sir. The more pioneer hearted he is, the more of a kind, nice feller he'll be. And you can always spot a real true woodsman right smack off the bat by one easy test. When he leaves his camp, does he put out his fire? That's it. Well, a greenhorn tenderfoot will leave a fire burning. Or he'll kind of half put it out and leave some red coals and sparks. But the real kind of a pioneer feller will always make bigosh and bigolly and make dead certain that his fire is every bit out before he'll break camp and leave. And now, 
Now, fellas, I'll tell you, like I promised, some of th some of the kinds of places where to look for your trout when you get that raw to work in. Now I'm talking about fishing for them in brooks and rivers. Well, see, you want to find a stream that's flowing along in a pretty good clip. So's there's a bit of rapids and maybe some waterfall places. Now you'll find darn good trout in a place where the water comes a-scooting through between rocks and banks and races for a level stretch. You want to take and cast your fly out across that there fast water and bring it back in towards you in little even jerks. Not much of a jerk, but some. Then you'll see the water bust clean apart and a big old trout jump and grab your fly and, and start in to give you a fight. Or you'll find him in a pool of water right by the bottom of a waterfall spot. Ah, they like that fine. And if you get a stream that flows along through fields and meadows, good place. You know, like where the water is wore down into the earth and, and left the banks kind of cut out underneath so's the hangover? Well, sir, when you, when you find a stream like that, you want to walk careful. Yes, keep from getting too much in sight of the fish. And cast your flies so's they don't float right along across the edge of them there brooks close under the bank. Then all to once there'll be a yank on your line that'll make your heart want to jump clean out. And you'll have a good trout on your line. You see, you can fish them streams with worms if you got a mind to. But for real sport, that takes a fella that's clever and got brains and skills, well, you want to do some fly fishing. That's it. You got to make that there fish think the little gadget you've got on your line is a real sure enough fly, too. And when you get him hooked, you got to play him real careful. Ah, don't pull up with a yank. Don't pull hard. Just... Keep your line tight, and you'll get that fish so tired he'll he'll just give up, and and you can reel him in, and scoop him up in your net, and take him home. And when you get the big ones, by golly, your dad'll let his eyes come popping right out. Man, that's what I call real sport. And now, before I leave you, I'm going to ask you another one of those questions. And I hope is how you know these now, because if you're doing what I want you to do, you'll be a reading Uncle Ray's story in the Herald and Mail every day. Yes, Uncle Ray travels round a good deal, gets round to telling you lots of things that I don't have time to, because, you see, he has that story for you boys and girls in, in the Halifax Herald and Mail every smack day. Here's the question I'm going to ask you. And I'm going to answer it right away, too, just for a change. Is a lodestone a heavy piece of flint? Or is it a meteor? Or is it a piece of magnetic iron ore? Or is it a stone loaded with lead? That's the question. You boys and girls, a lot of you can answer it. Because I know you're reading Uncle Ray's story. But I'm going to answer it for the rest of you that don't know, just to help you along. Well, a lodestone, boys and girls, is a piece of magnetic iron ore. That's the question, and that's the answer. And by golly, I see my time is up. So I'll have to be just getting along now. Uncle Mel's got some things to take up with you. Yes, indeed he has. And now I'll say good night and turn things over to him, sure enough. Well, there we go. Yeah, an old timer got here after all tonight. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, well, if he gets lost, at any rate, he has one of those identification bracelets. <laughs> the old man ever... The old man ever gets in a faint or... or has an accident or anything, why... be able to find him quick enough, just know who he is. Yeah, and I want all you boys and girls to get your identification bracelet, too. You know, our meetings continue till the end of June. That that'll be here before we know it, you know. That's right, and I'd like you to have... I'd like you to have your identification bracelets all before we close up for the season, because our meetings will be closing for the months of July and August. And by the way, boys and girls, I'm, I want to thank you for your good attendance at our meetings these fine evenings. Yes, you've done right smart well now, I'll tell you, writing in your letters this time of year. And sometimes you think, well, it's kind of hard for a boy or a girl, you know, to sit down, write a letter this time of year, nice fine days and evenings. But I was thinking it's not a bad idea if you belong to a safety club to keep up your attendance because it'll remind you to practice the, the safety pledge of our club. And you know, if you just take 15 minutes and come into our club meeting every night, well, then you'll remember safety first a lot more easily, won't you? And if you do that, we'll have a better summer after all. And besides, I like to feel you boys and girls are here just the same, just for the 15 minutes of our meeting anyway. And I've got my magic glasses here, and I'm going to put them on right away and take a look around. Oh, and I'm going to look over at uh, you, Glasgow, right away. I'm hearing from a lot of boys and girls over there, and I want to see a few of you tonight. I think that's Marguerite McKnight this evening, yes, and Florence McLaren. Good evening, Marguerite and Florence. Very glad to see you this evening. And I'm, uh, I'm very glad that you're going to send in now, right away, for your badges and your bracelets. That's fine. Yeah, you know, boys and girls, Marguerite and Florence, they said that they've been silent members for a long time. Yeah, well, now, silent members may be all right, but we don't want many of you in our club. We're very glad to have you here, but we certainly do like hearing from you. So, like Marguerite and Florence, if you haven't yet written in, why, you write in. And then I'll get to know your name, so I can say, as I'm going to now, there's Hugh Kirkpatrick at Weston. But, Hugh, you understand that I couldn't call you by name before because I didn't know it, did I? And I see Sylvia Turner at Moser River, a very lovely place, and I've been there lots of times. Yes, long before you were a twinkle in your father's eye, uh, Sylvia. <laughs> and there's Gladys Henderson at Westville. And uh, Chrissy Moore at New Glasgow, oh, who's so fond of Moyer's biscuits and cakes. You know, uh, uh, Chrissy, you tell all the other boys and girls that all they need to do is send in three labels from Moyer's cake and three from Moyer's biscuit with a postage stamp, and they'll receive the identification bracelet, too. Will you remember that? Well, that's fine. You just show your bracelet round and uh, tell all the boys and girls about it. Oh, there's Daisy Mills at New Glasgow, too, and Verna McGinnis at Sheet Harbor, and Dorothy Rennie at Westville, and Mrs. W.H. Uh, Herrett at Spring Hill. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Herrett, for sending in the bracelet for Shirley Rose at South Peabody, Massachusetts. Yes, and enough wrappers for two bracelets to be used any way Uncle Mel wishes. Well, they're going to go uh, to a, an orphan's home. Mrs. Herrett, and thank you very much for your kind thought. Oh, and there's Jean and George and Gladys Denon at Westville, and Phyllis McMillan at Westville. Mm-hmm. -hmm. I'm glad you see so many of the bracelets being worn around there. Well, you tell all the boys and girls to send in, but it's time for me to say good night again. So good night, and safety first. <laughs>